Hi, I'm Tamara The Scope with your solar storm forecast for the week of July 16th. We'll begin this week by talking about a set of solar storms that happened during SDO's calibration. Do you see the screen shaking like that? It made them really hard to spot, but there was one that happened on July 9th right at center disk, one that happened on July 10th that's northeast of center disk, and that happened simultaneously with this beautiful prominence eruption that occurred on the west limb around July 11th. Now those are the major players, despite the fact that we've had a ton of active regions transiting Earth view, we really really haven't had much other activity going on. When we flip to our M-flare threat meter, you can see over the last few days, we haven't had any M-flares, even though we've had 11, no less than 11 active regions that have been transiting the disk. And as those begin to move off the west limb, you can see that baseline just continues to go down below the sea floor, and it's really quieting down. Returning to those solar storms, this is our prediction model Enlil. The top panel's density, the bottom panel's velocity. You can see those two solar storms coming out. The one moving to the west, that's the prominence eruption, but the one that's coming earthward, that was from that center disk eruption, and it did indeed hit us. In fact, when we switch to our solar wind, you can see this whole purple region here. This is actually a one-two punch. There were two solar storms that hit us, but despite lasting that long, it never had the right magnetic configuration in order to create aurora. That red line there that stays above zero, that means the field was northward and it stayed like that. So it really never had a big impact. But luckily we do see that this yellow line shows the velocity is increasing, so we are entering fast wind from a coronal hole that might bring us some activity in the next day or so. So what else does the sun have in store for us this week? Well, this is Stereo B, it's our backside monitor. You can see here's Earth, here's the sun, and here's Stereo B looking at the sun from behind. And right now you can see that pretty much all of the activity is on the west limb of the sun, just rotated out of Earth view, and the backside is pretty bland, which means we probably won't have any flare activity over the next week or so. Looking at synoptic charts that show all of the active regions all over the sun, the two vertical lines show the east and west limb and they bracket the Earth field of view. Now when we set these charts in motion, you can see all of these active regions that are beginning to transit off to the west limb and there's not much coming on behind the east limb to replace it. You can see things grow and then decay pretty much before that even reaches the east limb. So that's probably going to continue over the next week or so. Returning to the disk, you can see we began this week with an absolute ton of active regions that are transiting Earth view. And it's just a wonder how we managed not to get any M flares from this group as it's gone by. And now as the regions are now moving off to the west limb, there's been absolutely nothing to replace them. It's like the sun has gotten acne medicine or something because the blemishes are clearing up and there's just nothing here. So NOAA has actually reduced its M flare threat level to down to pretty much nil. And it's probably going to remain like that over the next week. Turning to our solar storm conditions and aurora possibilities over the next five days, we do have that high speed stream that is hitting Earth now, and so at high latitudes that might increase the activity at level a bit, you might actually be able to see some aurora over the next day or so. At mid latitudes, expect maybe unsettled conditions, but probably not aurora. Uh, and then as it'll taper down, we don't have any solar storms in the forecast of late, so it'll probably remain calm until about the 19th when we might start getting some activity again because we will hit yet another high-speed stream. Turning to our solar flare and particle radiation storm outlook, it's pretty peaceful out there. NOAA's only giving us about a 1% chance of M-class flares over the next three days, and you could probably extend that well into next week. And that also means we have very little chance for a particle radiation storm over the next week as well. So overall, this week looks to be pretty calm. We did just pass through that set of solar storms that didn't really impact us much but brought us some really good ham radio conditions over the past few days. And now we're entering some fast solar wind that could bring us some activity and maybe even aurora at high latitudes, but probably not enough to cause any GPS disruptions. And since there are no solar storms forecasted, we won't see any activity again until probably the 19th when we see yet another high speed stream. But all of this could change at a moment's notice if the sun decides to send us anything new. Until then, enjoy your week. I'm Tamitha Scove. Thank you for watching.